you see what I'm carving? It's not like I, I can just wake up in the morning and start carving. I have to go into this zone, you know. I have to find the right piece of wood, and the wood has to talk to me. Then, uh, next thing I know, you just grab the chainsaw and start going. Sometimes you come up with a nice idea, then you start carving it, then you realize, ah, no, I want to carve something else. Then sometimes the sculpture switches direction. Okay, now I'm gonna get ready to start carving. What does that look like for you? So I was born in Zimbabwe, in a town called Chinoy. Yeah, I started when I was a little, little boy. I started carving stone. I didn't really carve the same. So my grandfather would make a piece, and you go as maybe for a beer drink, I would just grab his tools and smash it. And he comes back and be like, whoa, this you might be angry, I don't know. But one day he say, okay, this is your stone. You're gonna carve this. And don't touch mine. So I was living in the country, I was carving these small things, but when I moved to the city, I realized, uh-uh, there's something about art, you know. So I started carving abstract stuff. I've already been an artist all my life, so I never really worked for anybody. So I just pursued that until now. I might have worked a few jobs here and there, but I hated it. I couldn't be there. So all I could do is just I gotta do what I feel like doing and it made me happy. I moved from Zimbabwe to the US all for art, especially I travel for art. I was gonna be an artist. I moved here, I was carving for this one little gallery in Boulder. Then it closed down. Then I still carving. I pursued music for a while. Ow! I started playing music and stuff. Then uh, the music was getting hard because it's not easy to have a, a band, you know? Because everybody got jobs. Everybody got to do this, so it's, it was hard to even keep the one band together. That's when it popped out. Chainsaw Carving Competition, Cray, Colorado. Oh, sure enough, it's a carving competition, but this one is being done by chainsaws. So I looked at the guys at, I was like, man, I can beat these guys. But then I was, at the same time, I started carving because, because I went to that competition. So I was carving and playing music. But I wasn't really carving. I would just come in a competition and carve in a competition and say, that's it. Yeah. Until I realized, nah, man, I can make this into a business. I need to start carving every day. That's when I started looking for shops. It was a little complicated. But I ended up now, now I got a dollar right here. Oh, it was a refreshing moment, you know, because when you're creating art, you go to some amazing zones. It's like space travel, man. You go. So with artists, it's to create something out of nothing. The satisfaction in the end, you know, like, oh, wow, look what I just did. Where I'm at is the windiest spot in Boulder, between Boulder and Golden. This is the windiest spot. So I used to have a little shop here, and one day I came back, the wind had took it off. It toppled down. This shop was right here where I'm sitting, and it rolled and rolled, and the floor is still back there. So I lost it. That's the same wind which caused the fire, the martial fire in Boulder. I'm worried about people losing their houses in Boulder. You know, the fire was intense. So you're like in that zone of being worried for people, you know, like, wow, these people are going to lose all their homes. Then one of my friends was driving here. He stopped here and he calls me like, oh man, there's no building. Your building is gone. I couldn't believe it. I drove up here, sure enough, all trashed. It was very devastating. And the thing is, I didn't know how to deal with it. So I just left it like that. 
because I didn't know what to do. I just looked at it, I was like, ah, I'm out of here. Until uh, one of my best friends, uh, John Atkins, yeah, he called me. He's like, hey, Bongo, I'm right here at the shop. We have a trailer. Let's, let's move all the debris out. I said, I drove here. She went out with a big trailer. We started loading everything in the trailer. There were like three loads or so. And they didn't ask for anything for it. It was a reawakening because I didn't know how to deal with it. I want to leave by one thing, man. Love, you know. Love is a solution. Love one another, you know. Because right now we're living in serious times, you know. So I believe if there was much love in the world, the world would be a better place.